Good morning and a very warm welcome to our morning prayer on Wednesday the 23rd of September. If you want to follow today's readings, they are from Psalm 34. The Old Testament is from 1 Kings chapter 10 verses 1 to 25 and the New Testament reading is taken from Acts chapter 17 starting from verse 1 to 15. But I would like us to look again at what prayer is and how we should engage in it. Selwyn Hughes wrote, I regard prayer as the means of bringing my whole life, spirit, soul and body into intimate personal contact with the living God. I can commune with him, adjust my will to his and through that relationship have a knowledge of the Creator. Yet how is it that praying can be the most difficult to do, especially when we're stressed, tired or busy? Well, daily morning prayer is a discipline which helps us to bring ourselves within the will of God on a daily basis. It doesn't matter what method we use to pray, just that we do. Well, we are in good company, as the disciples also asked, teach us to pray. So let us consider our great teacher, Jesus himself. What is he known to have done? He seeks his father's company and would go off to pray alone, often early in the morning. He found space on his own to be strengthened for service, for guidance in decision making, and for making sure he kept to the purpose his father had for him. He is showing the people who his father is by his actions. He's pointing the way to the kingdom of God. He speaks of new birth, washing away their sins and going into Jerusalem to be a sacrifice once and for all. By showing us this, we too can pray as Jesus does. We can see God's word in action. But Jesus prays for us that we might be one, as the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit are all working continuously together. So we too should reflect this unity. Jesus prays that we will be holy, being set apart from this world, checking our hearts, our motives and keeping a check upon our tongue and that we might receive the full measure of joy. Jesus speaks of the persistent widow, teaching us how to continually lift to him our concerns. We do not need to be eloquent in speech. We can shout, talk, whisper, or use no words at all. Being open and honest before the creator and sustainer of life. But the Christian life isn't easy. Evil plays its part. We're told to take courage, for God has overcome the world. But we are involved as a praying army, warriors as such. We are in a battle, and as all soldiers, we have weapons to fight with. So let us become very familiar with the armour of God. The belt of truth around our waist the breastplate of righteousness, on our feet the readiness of the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith to extinguish the flaming arrows of Satan. Place upon your head the helmet of salvation. Take the sword of the Spirit. Know the word of God. Cut through the things that are sent to hinder us and stop us from going forward. Jesus has the authority over evil, and we too can by his death and resurrection. We're not praying in our own strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, who intercedes in groans when we have no words left to speak. We are called to be good listeners when the Spirit prompts us to pray, when we're given the words to say, for the acts of kindness and encouragement to our fellow saints. 
Let us be always open to share the hope we have and our personal walk of faith. Yes, prayer can be a dangerous thing as we open ourselves up to be examined. We are challenged by our attitudes, our way of thinking and the habits formed over many years. Jesus is in the business of transformation and as his children he wants us to reflect the love so freely given. So now let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we offer you this day. Help us to be obedient to your Spirit's prompting. We place into your hands the people we will see, converse with and pray for. May we be your hands, feet and mouthpiece. Help us to remain true to your word, standing firm while we remember the battle we find ourselves in. We pray for the broken world we live in and we ask that you would use this coronavirus to bring people to their senses. The idols of money, power and fame mean nothing when death could be imminent. By your Holy Spirit, reveal yourself. Bring us back to you. We ask that you examine our hearts. Grant us forgiveness as we too give forgiveness to those who have hurt us. And at the moment we pray for our world leaders. Give them wisdom as they seek to make the right decisions for their people's needs. We pray for our local leaders who are making area decisions also. Father, we don't know how to pray for the time we find ourselves in, but you have already ready gone before us. We know the end of the story. Jesus is the winner. Help us to live our lives in the light of this truth. We pray for the persecuted church. Strengthen them. Help them as they stand firm in the face of adversity. Feed them physically and spiritually. Lord, we bring before you those who are sick, in body, mind or spirit. Bring them restoration and healing. We ask for comfort on all those who are grieving the death of a loved one. We'd like to pray especially for our precious NHS staff and key workers. Be really close to them as they call on you in their hour of need. These things we ask in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we close, we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So have a good day. Contact one another and remain close to God in prayer. May God richly bless you until next time. Goodbye.